Thank you so much, Jenny, for the, the great introduction. When I think of the phrase true grit, I think of the brave women who jump out of the planes to serve our country. I think of the female officers patrolling our communities day and night. But when I had the opportunity to sit down with the other speakers prior to tonight's event and learn about their life, I realized we have a lot of gritty, determined, persistent, and courageous women here in Northwest Indiana. It took some It took some convincing, but I haven't accepted that I am one of those gritty women as well. To give you a little background, like Jenny said, by day, I'm a certified public accountant for my dad's accounting firm in Michigan City, Apple Bean and Company CPAs. My dad started the firm back in 1984, and in 2014, my brother Blake and myself both came back to work alongside him and the rest of the terrific game co team. At nights, on weekends, at holidays, and pretty much any other time I'm able to help and respond, I'm a volunteer firefighter and medical responder for Long Beach Volunteer Fire Department. I remember when my inspiration to help others first started. I was in high school with one of my best friends, Brian, who is now a Michigan City Police Corporal. We were on our way to a haunted house in Three Oaks, Michigan. Upon driving on the highway to get there, a car accident happened right in front of our eyes. A car swerved to miss another one, flipped three or four times, and finally landed upside down. The other car was T-bone and slid into a ditch. Brian and I jumped out instantly and got to work. Having no medical training, not even CPR, we divided and conquered. I took the T-bone car, Brian took the upside down one. It was adrenaline, instinct, and determination. The car I ran to had been completely smashed on the passenger side. The woman sitting in the front seat was trapped. She had a head contusion and was extremely confused and out of it. I jumped to the seat behind her, stabilized her neck and head, and sat there until the medics arrived. I tried to reassure her that everything was going to be okay and did my best to keep everyone calm. We never found out what happened to those involved in the accident, but needless to say, the haunted house wasn't that scary after what we had just been through. Fast forward to 2008. At that time, my brother Blake, who is here supporting me tonight, and my best friend Brian were volunteer firefighters on the Long Beach Volunteer Fire Department. The three of us, the three of us grew up in several. LBFT had historically been a male-only department, so when they joined, I never thought it was going to be a place for me. I remember chatting with Brian about our experience we had back in high school with that car accident, and how I liked to volunteer as an emergency medical responder for the department, but not fire. I didn't, I didn't think I was strong enough or courageous enough. Brian, of course, was in favor of the idea. He went to speak with Dave Ellers, the fire chief at the time, to get his thoughts on me joining. Chief Dave was not only in support of it, but he wanted me to sign up for the medical and the fire side of the department. In order to get voted on by our fire department, you're required to attend two business meetings in a row. They're held only once a month. The first to meet the department, get to know the guys, and the second to either get voted on or not. In June of 2008, I attended my second meeting. The prospective member is asked to leave the room while the current membership discusses whether or not to approve of them joining the department. I stood outside the meeting room in the truck case, looking at the fire, looking at the fire trucks, thinking how embarrassing it will be if they say no. And even worse if they say yes, how will we be able to keep up with everyone else? I was asked to come back to the room where they welcomed me to the department with a majority vote in favor of me joining and only one individual who voted in A against me joining. With a small department like ours, we're traveling fast and I, vote out who, I found out who voted in A against me joining. I wasn't offended, in fact, it just made me want to work harder, be better, and show this person that in fact I did belong in this department and could not only keep up with them, but run circles around them. Our department has an ice cream social that we put on for our community. All our welcomes 
In July of 2010, I remember working at Ice Cream Social and going into our meeting room to grab some more supplies. I saw my naysayers sitting in the room as I walked in. He looked at me and then asked to come talk to me in private. Reluctantly, I went into the office to see what he had to say. Thankfully, Chief Dave was in there counting donations, so at least I had a witness to whatever was to come next. It was at that point when he said to me, I was wrong for voting against you. You've done a great job of training, you're earning your keep, and you're running circles around a lot of us old guys. Since 2008, the department has become my family. Not only because my brother and my brother-in-law are on it, but the people in the department would do anything for each other. As of today, we now have four females on the department, including myself. When a call goes out on my pager that I wrote with me in my work, I never know what I'm going to face when I get to the hall. Sometimes it's a spouse screaming hysterically after they find their loved one face down on the floor. Other times it's a 2 a.m. call for an elderly individual who just needs help back up into bed. There's been quite a few instances most recently where I've caught myself making breakfast for a patient who has a diabetic issue to get their sugar back up. And I will say I've gotten pretty damn good at making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a side of orange juice. I've sat with patients to make sure they're okay until the ambulance comes. I've spoke with their loved ones on the phone to let them know what's going on. And I've even sometimes had to give a spouse a ride to the hospital because they can't drive them back because of night blindness. But what all of this has in common is the courage and the true grit it takes to go into a stranger's home, not knowing if that stranger has a gun, if they're unconscious or hurt, knowing that no matter what, I'm going to do whatever I can to help them. Because this person called me for help in what could be one of the scariest times in their life. And it takes a lot for some people to ask for help. I'm guilty of it as well. But our department is one of the most caring, courageous group of individuals, and I haven't second-guessed my opinion, my decision once in joining LVFD. True grit can be found in any small town. You just have to be willing to accept it. Thanks so much, Jenny, and the rest of the team for coming on to our